So, just leaving the house now. Hopefully, finish my uh, night rating. I mean, look at the weather. Looks all right, doesn't it? Surely. I'm here. So, what do we reckon? Do we reckon that's a go? Birds, birds, birds. Don't know. Let's go and find out, shall we? Well, I've booked out. There she is. 28-180 Good evening Gloucester Tower, this is Golf Bravo Office here at Juliet with information X-ray at Apron Golf uh, with QNH 1004 request taxi Golf Bravo Alpha Sierra Juliet, Gloucester Tag, leading to you, taxi on point Alpha 2. Taxi Alpha 2, Golf Bravo Alpha Sierra Juliet. Now, the aircraft just departing from Alpha 2 is Golf Echo Kilo India Romeo, which I've flown before when I was flying with Aeros a number of years ago. Golf Sierra Juliet's holding Alpha 2 ready for departure. Go to the hold position after departure will be noise abatement followed by a left turn to the south. Traffic on departure is turning right into the circuit. Runway 27 is 555, wet, wet, wet. Hold position, uh, left turn after noise abatement and traffic. Uh, we'll be looking for traffic. Go to Juliet. Go to Juliet, runway 27 clear for takeoff, wind 213 degrees, 6 knots. Uh, clear for takeoff, go to Juliet. It's fair to say that my anxiety levels are increasing now. There was a decent crosswind across the runway, which means as soon as the aircraft rotates, you'll see the nose shuttlecock into the wind. And I think I even start to say something and then stop because my capacity for even speaking is uh, fairly limited. Bit of anxiety breathing there. T's and P's are in the green. Oh, Airspeed oh, is alive. So Fox Fox Kilo, the Cherokee on departure is turning left to the back. There you go. Oh, that's Traffic a bit of a... previous to that is in the right hand side. The nose shuttle copped into wind and uh, I couldn't even have the capacity to make that comment. I was pretty, pretty anxious, I think, to be fair, but it's, it's natural. And a bit of anxiety is healthy, I think. The video quality is not great at all. I'm going to have to invest in a decent DSLR and then work out how to attach that to the aircraft to get some decent footage at night. It was quite hazy, and in the climb-out, I noticed that there was a thin layer, almost like you see when you get an inversion Official night, that night, I think, from memory, was 1635. Feet checks. Golf Sierra Juliet, then basic service. Basic service, uh, Golf Sierra Juliet. So my plan was to fly down to the two bridges, the seven bridges, and then to come back up on the east side. But unfortunately, I didn't get very far as you'll see. The airport was closing at half five and that didn't give me a lot of tolerance really, to be fair. Aeros 57, downwind, touch and go. Aeros 57, report final. We'll go at Aeros 57. So my climb speed was 75 knots 
and my ground speed at one point was about 50 so that would mean at 2000 feet there was a 25 knot headwind. I can remember thinking at this point am I going to get down to the bridges or not? I looked at the clock basically I would have to get down there back taxi get out the aircraft ready for the fire crew to put it away into the hangar or by half past five I'm just flying over Gloucester now so my first visual reference point was the bends in the River Severn which is a well-known VRP for aviators Just to the left of the nose you can see the River Severn and then below that on the left you can see the Gloucester docks and then the start of the Gloucester to Sharpness Canal. So, Freedak, fuel on the right tank from 1640, and we are in balance. Radio is 128555, talking to Gloucester Tower. Altitude, 2500 feet on QNH 1004. DI, 2425. Oh, and that's not bad. Let's just get back onto heading. Uh, Carby. I had to think what the C in Freedak was. Of course it's Carby. There's a little lever that you push on and it basically diverts hot air from the exhaust in through the inlet manifold so that there isn't any carby forming in the Venturi part of the carburetor. This was the original flight that I planned on Sky Demon. Gloucester to the bends in the river, down to Chepstow, to Glynn's house, <laughs> and then on to Old Ends Lane roundabout, and then back to Gloucester. But due to the fact that the airfield was closing at half five, and the weather was clearly closing in, the fact it was 10 to 5, there was no way I was going to get this done. I don't think I'm going to get down to the bridges, which is a shame. Would have been nice to get down there. It's pretty mucky up here actually, so I'm quite lucky. What's our ground speed? 70 knots. So we're going to be bombing along when we go back. I don't really want to climb any more than this, really. Wise words, mate. Good choice. So we're now back at the airfield or over the top of the airfield doing a standard overhead join and I'm halfway around the descent on the dead side so at 1500 feet I need now to get down to the circuit height of a thousand feet. I'll then join the circuit crosswind albeit just over the numbers of the other end of the runway. So in this case 09. If you look at my ground speed I'm doing 50 knots so I'm starting to go on to crosswind but that wind starts to blow me significantly so my downwind leg is considerably short so short that I nearly nearly forgot to do my downwind checks so I'm now over the top of the airfield now
and now I'm starting to roll onto downwind. So you watch my airspeed start to creep up. <laughs> creep up indeed, look. Sir Julius, downwind. Land. Oh, Sir Julius, number two, follow the Cherokee on file. That traffic is for a touch and go. Number two, uh, look at the traffic, uh, vision of the traffic, go, Sir Julius. You can see GCHQ on the right there. It's a great VRP. Oh, my gate tray. Is your airfield identification lights on? Hey, sir. Thank you. There's Cheltenham in front of me now. Thanks for the light, Air uh, 57. Uh. Two stages of flap, rolling onto Air base. Air 57, runway 27, clear, touch and go, wind 220 degrees, one circle. Yeah, touch and go, Air uh, 57. Power and back to about 1800 RPM, keeping that nose up so that the speed bleeds off. That's the airspeed. GCHQ, a very prominent visual reference point. This is when it started to get quite choppy. Now with the stabilisation it might be difficult to see but just keep your eye on the nose and just watch what that nose is doing. It's going left to right, left to right. There's the runway. You can see the crosswind there. Crosswind, Julian's final to land. Crosswind, Julian, continue approach, wind 227 degrees, 10 knots, traffic to depart. Continuing, Crosswind, Julian. It's hard to see but the nose is pointing significantly to the left as I'm crabbing towards the runway. I was pretty anxious again on this bit. Go oh, Sir Julia, runway 27, to land, wind 227, very formal. Clear to land, Gulf I'm a little bit low there. Two whites there should be and two reds, and I've got one white and three reds. 38, uh, Trinity, Gulf Zero, Tango, hold, altitude 4,000 feet. 38, report ready for the precision. Okay, Sir Yeah, I should have put some power in. It's not unsafe, but it's uh, it's better to be a bit higher. Yeah, a little bit heavier than I'd like, but okay. Go, Sir Juliet, back to runway two seven. Backtrack, Robert T sub Gulf Sierra Juliet. I think I start moaning about how that was a bit heavy in a sec. I think that was a bit heavy, but considering the wind and the conditions, I was quite happy with that. I think you're never happy with your landings, unless they're greasers. Golf Charlie Dub, Mike X-ray, three miles. Golf Mike X-ray, report descending on the dead side, circuit active with traffic turning downwind. Uh, Wilco Golf Mike X-ray. So if you look at the time now, it's 17.07. I've still got a taxi back to the apron. I've got to do the shutdown checks and the after landing checks before. Aero 57, downwind, touch and go, request puppies off. Aero 57, Wilco, report final. Wilco, Aero 57. Go to Juliet, taxi via Alpha 2, guy. Taxi Alpha 2, back to parking. Thanks very much uh, for your service, uh, Go to Juliet. Yeah, so there's no way I could have got any further, really. Because by the time I've shut down, it's going to be another five minutes. And then they've got to put the aircraft away, they've got to walk back to the club base. I did the right thing. Anyway, thanks for watching this. Hope you found it interesting, maybe. And when I got back to the club base, my instructor signed my night rating off. We submitted it to the CAA, and for £147, the CAA will kindly add that to my licence. I can't actually use the rating until I have the paper copy in my hand, although I could use my instructor's licence 
but I would have to pay him and it would be classed as instruction. <laughs>